So the latest episode of Star Trek Lower Decks came out the other day. It's the fourth episode of the fifth and final season, A Farewell to Farms. So this episode is different. It opens very differently than most of the other episodes. Because after the cold open, which establishes that um, the Klingon from... Um, we've seen him in several other episodes, including the season finale of that episode, of the season and all that. We find out that he's, you know, he's back on his parents' blood wine farm. So, cultivating blood wine. And apparently he's been stripped of his captaincy. That's the premise. Mariner's also trying to get in contact him, but he doesn't want to talk to her. And Mariner and Boyne will then show up. And apparently Boyne was going through a bit of a obsession with Klingon culture and all that stuff right now. So, like, he's been made to wear to this obsession, which even Mariner's finding a bit, you know, different, unusual, overbearing, you could even say that. And so he's like, weird, obscure rights he's aware of. Like, he's all of a sudden fine with violence, but in a way, this is part of his character where he's become more confident, maybe a little more rolling with the punches a little bit, especially here on Kronos, because Klingons punch a lot more than Starfleet does. Anyhow, Mariner hatches, with as born with knowledge, hatches up a plan to get get the Klingon captains his, his captaincy back. And it turns out that the um, Klingon from... Episode 1 and Episode 2 of Season 1 is actually on the Oversight Council, but the person in charge of the Oversight Council does not want to give the captaincy back at all, because apparently his brother was killed by the Kl that Klingon, whose name I just cannot remember. I should have looked it up before recording my review. Anyhow, they go through a bunch of ritual trials, including invoking a very obscure... You know, well, the, the trials they invoke to get the, the his command back his captaincy back is actually also a very obscure ritual that has not been done in like 200 years. But also involved another obscure ritual called the Writ of Conscription to literally enter the group to conscript the head of the Oversight Council because the final one is the Rite of Sacrifice. So, <laughs> the idea is make the head be the one who has to be sacrificed. It works out in the end and turns out Boimo and Mariner also needed a Klingon ship because that dude was not letting them get any Starfleet vessels into the, at least the section of space of the Klingon Empire that Starfleet wanted to go in to check out some space fissures. And which, by the way, that connects up with the ongoing plot that we've had in the season where, you know, temporal rifts and all that, and turns out they're being made artificially. What could be going on there? But meanwhile, back on the Cerritos, they're fearing some food critics from Dr. Megnamo's home planet back home. And of course, apparently his planet very obsessed with food and all that, and have, getting a bad you no know, critique from a culinary critic is just the worst thing that can happen. Or they don't those, those food critics do not like Dr. Megnamo's cooking, both the replicated stuff and the actual stuff. And yet when they get back on the home world, they'll you know act like everything's you no know, tastes no good. Well, that's also because, you know, the Cerritos got the female suspected something's off and literally switched that food with something that was intended to be disgusting. And turns out they lost their taste buds. But honestly, this is the, the, the B plot, which reads just to fill time, you know, con not even really a contrast in some way. It was just to, I guess, give us some insight in Dr. Megamo's character, which implies that he might have something important to go on. Again, we know more about his culture, but also, another thing that we learn out is, you know, the fact that he's a psychologist is basically the Klingon equivalent of being a peace treaty broker, I guess, or a Romulan equivalent of not being sneaky, or a Cardassian equivalent of not being a fascist. Like, something along those lines. Like, he's just an outlier in his culture, which makes him perfect for the Cerritos. No. Lynn is not the average Vulcan. Tendi's not the average Orion. It, he just fits in perfectly there. But apparently, he's, you know, despite being a psychologist, he's still a pretty good cook, apparently. And also, you know, he says that he cooks the mind. But, like, literally, he's able to use his psychology to explain why the, the food critics lost their sense of taste and how they're going to work through it. As long as they're footing the catering bill, which... I forget who it was, but commented that, is that even Eskimo? It might have been Tindy, 
And then Marino's just like, let him have it. Not Marino. Captain Friedman. But the mother and daughter, so I, Marino definitely would say that. So yeah, I think this episode is probably... I don't know if it's my favorite episode. It's not the funniest and all that. Um, but no, it's still a really good episode. And it really reveals important information about the, all these temporal rift and fissures that have been going on. We haven't gotten many of them, but they've been referenced in passing. We had Dos Cerritos, where the Cerritos passed through one and they had mentioned that there had been a number of them. We have the Tiny Intrepid from um, the Nay Night Hotel episode one. And now we get this episode, which they actually get some good scans of them now. So things are building up and apparently it's they're artificial. So what could be going on? We just got to wait and see. So that's all I got to say, but I would love to hear your thoughts on A Farewell to Farms in the comment section down below. And of course, live long and prosper. Thank you for watching my video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like and share. Also, consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date on all my latest videos. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. May the Force be with you, always.